Home stretch, everybody. So today we'll be talking about the male reproductive system. But before we start with the male reproductive system, we have to talk about gonads. Now, what are gonads? So gonads are the reproductive organs and tissues of your body. And the male, so what's the male reproductive gonad? Well, it's the testes and two testes in males and in females, you also have a pair of ovaries as well. Now, the primary functions of the gonads are, one, to make sex cells that you use for reproduction and creating a new individual, and also to produce hormones as well. So what are the cells that are produced in the male gonad? What cells are being produced by the testes? So the male's gonad, or actually the male's sex cell, is called a sperm, or spermatozoan is the more scientific term. But during this, this lecture, I'll refer to it as sperm, just because it's easier to say rather than having to say spermatozoan every single time. Now, you might know that the female reproductive cell is the egg, or ovum for singular, and ova for multiple. So again, and just like um, spermatozoan is referring to one, spermatozoa refers to multiple sperm. Now, what are the primary hormones secreted by the gonads in the male? Well, the hormones are androgens, and androgens is a category of hormone. It's not just one single hormone. And the famous testosterone, that is a type of androgen. Whereas in females, you have a, a estrogens. So again, often you hear estrogen referred to in the singular form, but actually there's many types of estrogen, but the most dominant type, the more powerful type, is what we call estradiol. So usually when people refer to estrogen singular, they're usually talking about estradiol. And there's also something called progestogens, and the primary progestogen is progesterone. So you probably heard of, of progesterone, but probably haven't heard of progestogens. Again, progestogen is a category, progesterone is a specific type of progestogen. Now, in terms of the reproductive organs, you have internal and external. So the external genitalia, these are the genitalia that you can see without having to take a closer look inside the person or to take cross sections. So you can see them just by the, the surface anatomy of a naked individual. And here we have the male and female external genitalia. Again, you can see these just as they are. Now this is obviously the penis, and this right down here is the scrotum. Pretty simple, right? So when it comes to reproductive anatomy, men are simple creatures. And you'll find out this not only applies to external genitalia, but also internal genitalia. Now the female external genitalia, what do you have here? Well, here we have the mons pubis, sometimes called the mons venus, or pubic mound. So it's actually a little cushion of adipose tissue here. And the cool thing about that is like, the mons pubis, well, why is it that, why do you have that insulation? Why do you have that little fat pad? Well, if you're, a woman is carrying and she has a baby, that also provides a little insulation for the head of the baby as it's in the womb. And then you have the clitoris. clitoris. So the clitoris is down here, and this is actually the hood, the prepuce that covers the clitoris. And actually, it's not shown in this male, but something called the foreskin. That's also, the medical term for that is the prepuce. And again, this is actually erectile tissue here. The clitoris is also erectile tissue, and it also has a hood. So like the foreskin is the hood of the male. The prepuce is uh, also the hood of the clitoris. Then you have the urethra. Again, the urethra, as we learned in the urinary system, is not being secure. The urine doesn't come out of the clitoris. It does not come out of the vagina. So again, it comes out of the urethra. So the urethra in males are here, or is here. And then the vagina, again, this two different passageways, urine and reproductive. Whereas males, like it's funny, like it ends up two pathways, but they end up coming out of the same orifice. And then you have your labia majora and minora. So again, labia is a Latin term referring to lips. So what we have here is the majora are on the outside and bigger. The minora are the inner ones and they're smaller. So that's what we see here in the external genitalia. Again, external genitalia versus internal. This external one is just at surface level. And actually the clitoris is often used in, in the lists of external genitalia. This is the part of the clitoris we can see, and I think I think it was in a Netflix documentary. It did a really good job of illustrating it, and I should I wish I could screen cap Netflix, 
But actually, the clitoris is also an internal genitalia. So it actually extends underneath the surface here. And it also has erectile tissue over here as well. So the clitoris is not just this part you see in surface anatomy. It actually goes between below the surface and around this, this the vestibule right here.